Welcome back to Battle for Arcos and another Dark Uprising battle report. Today, the Iron Skulls of House Goliath take on the Fallen Angels of House Escher. Only one will stay undefeated. Before we get into the game, let's take a look at the midweek campaign table. The Enforcers knocked off the Corpse Grinder cult, claiming their first victory of the campaign, while the Corpse Grinders fall to 0-2. The Enforcers now carry a gang rating of 935 and a wealth of 1090, while the Corpse Grinders have a gang rating of 1080 and a wealth of 1180. The Iron Skulls and Fallen Angels will meet today in a game of Scavenge, one that could favor Escher due to the mobility. Let's take a look at the Iron Skulls of House Goliath and how their gang has changed since week one. With no fighters in recovery and no roster changes, the Iron Skulls enter week two with seven active fighters. Territories generate income of 80 credits and no free Jews. The Underhive Shrine has given blessings in the upcoming battle to Spike, Fuse, and Dipstick. The Iron Skulls have an updated gang rating of 820 with a total wealth of 1,005. Over for the Fallen Angels of House Escher, the gang was refunded 100 credits for the illegal purchase of a plasma gun. They have brought in a ganger, Edge, with last gun and stiletto knife, and a champion, Lace, with a plasma gun, last pistol, and stiletto knife. Lace will have the spring up skill, allowing her to stand as a free action when pinned as long as she passes an initiative check. This would be a basic action. Territories generate a whopping 160 credits, no Juves were earned and plus one rep. The gang has eight active fighters and a gang rating of 875 and a total wealth of 1,030. Just like old times, eh? To think our paths cross again on our coast. I think you've got something for me, yeah? Don't flatter yourself, me, Meg. I guess we'll just have to see about that. While you toss pots sit around here, my boys are already rubbing the place blind. Alright, today we'll be playing Scavenge, where both gangs, desperate for supplies, attempt to loot the battlefield. The Iron Skulls will be our attacker today, and both gangs will bring their full complement of fighters. There will be 11 loot objectives on the table, and it requires a double loot action to see if they contain anything useful. On a roll of 4+, plus, a victory point is assigned. On a roll of 1, well, let's just say that could be fun. Each gang will bring two tactics cards to the fight, and the battle will end when all objectives have been looted or only one gang is left standing. Order is in ascendancy, with call to arms being rolled. Deployment complete for both sides. I will be rolling up for House Escher today. My son will be rolling up for House Goliath. These two sides simply just don't like each other. There's no other way to put it. House Escher having a grudge against House Goliath, one, because they're men, two, just simply because they exist. Here at the beginning of the game after deployment, House Escher is going to play a tactics card called Stealthy Tactics or Stealthy Advance, where they are going to move up to half their fighters with a free movement, and we're going to see Sleek move up to the objective. Uh, we're going to see Eclipse move up to the door. We're then going to see Bella and Lace make moves up one to the ladder. Priority rolls going out now, and it's going to be House Escher coming up for turn one. We're going to see Eclipse open the door with her first action and then make a move into the alleyway with her second. Over for House Goliath, we're going to see Dipstick make a move up to a loot objective on his side of the board. And we are then going to see Sleek. She is going to use a double action to loot. And we're going to roll up this dice. And it is going to be a five. So Escher is going to find something useful, gain a victory point. We then flip over to Spike, who is going to make a move to another loot objective on their side of the board. And then Lace, we'll see, make a double move up. A lot of double moves here in the beginning as both sides try to take better positions. Uh, Acid is going to take a move here for House Goliath, moving up with a double move. We are then going to see Razor activate for House Escher. She is going to make a double move over the obstacle here. 
And then flipping back over, we're going to see Diesel. He is going to make a double move up as well, getting behind some cover. We will then see Edge make a double move for the Fallen Angels. And then we are going to see Scuzz make a double move up as well, getting behind cover. Trix will make a double move up. Bone Crusher is going to activate next, and he will also make a double move. Viper will activate for the Fallen Angels, making a double move. And then back over for the Iron Skulls, we are going to say, see Fuse make a double move up as well, getting behind some cover with his grenade launcher. And then we will see Bella activate last for the Fallen Angels. She is making a double move up the ladder and getting behind some cover. So turn one concludes quickly with a lot of movement, which is similar to uh, the majority of games that we play. Uh, a lot of fighters getting into better positions. House Escher, the Fallen Angels, did score one victory point on the opening turn. House Goliath now has two loot objectives that are within their grasp, but we'll have to see if they find anything useful coming up on turn two as uh, the fire is getting ready to break out. So priority rolls are coming out now, and it looks like House Goliath, the Iron Skulls, will be up first. And Dipstick is immediately going to use a double action to loot. He is going to get a victory point for the Iron Skulls. And then Bella is going to stare him down with her plasma gun and take shots. She needs threes to hit with an aim, and she is going to get uh, three hits with rapid fire. Rolling those out needing threes because he is only toughness three. She's going to get two wounds, and then AP minus one, six up saves required. Both failed, four injury dice rolled out, and he goes out of action. Diesel then activates, uses his first action to move right up against the loot objective. He's going to point his stub cannon through the window here, targeting Bella, needing fives to hit due to partial cover. And taking that shot, he is going to get a hit. We are then going to roll to wound, needing threes, and he is going to get a wound. This is going to knock Bella back, and uh, she's going to fail an armor save, and that's going to have an injury dice rolled out, going down with a serious injury. She's right next to the edge here, so taking an initiative check, she is actually going to fail that, and she is going to end up falling, and she falls down to the next level. That's going to be a strength three hit. It's not going to wound, but we do take another initiative check. She fails, falls again. There is again no wound, but this is her final resting place here. So after a wild start to the turn, we're going to see Eclipse make a double move, getting to the loot objective uh, in this room here. And then we'll flip back over to see Spike. He is going to go ahead and use a double loot action here and roll this dice out, looking for a four up in order to score points. And it is going to be a two, so nothing found here, no points for uh, the Iron Skulls. Next up, we are going to see Sleek make a double move. She moves up to the loot objective here, preparing to loot that next turn. And that is going to get a reaction from Scuzz, who is going to move around to get her in the open. And he's going to fire with his shotgun scatter shot template. So he's going to roll a D6 to see how many hits this is. And it is going to be five hits. The ammo check is good. He does need fives to wound, however. Strength two, toughness three. And then uh, getting those rolls coming out here. That is going to be a total of three hits coming, or three wounds coming through, uh, three five-up saves taken, and two fails. So two injury dice are rolled out, and an out-of-action dice is rolled sleek, going down to Scuzz by shotgun. We are then going to see Trix. She is going to move up and target Diesel with her last gun. She does get a bonus uh, for the shot, but he is in uh, full cover, so it will need fives. That shot is going to miss. We will then flip over to Acid, who is going to move up, get his stub cannon pointed through the windows here, and he is going to fire at Eclipse. Um, also needing, a, actually he needs a six due to a full cover, and that shot is going to miss as well. Going back over to Edge for the Fallen Angels, she is going to move up, and she is going to target Diesel with her, her last gun as well. Again, needing fives on the hit roll due to full cover and uh, that shot is going to miss. We are then going to flip back over to Fuse, who is going to move, 
and he is going to target the ground here. Could not quite get the champion in the template. Uh, does need fours to hit, and that shot is going to hit. Nothing's going to happen here. We'll then see Viper make a move up, being kind of cautious here. And then we're going to flip back over and see Bone Crusher. He is going to make a double move going towards the other side of the board. And then Lace is going to activate. She is going to move up with one action and use her second action to open the door here. And the remaining moves do belong to the Fallen Angels. We will see Razor make a double move, uh, getting through that doorway and trying to reposition on the other side of the board. And that is going to bring us to the end of turn two. So turn two started out with a lot of action. Dipstick was able to score one point for uh, the Iron Skulls before being taken out by Bella. And then uh, Diesel turns around and you know takes down Bella with a serious injury. We did roll for her at the end of turn two and she does take a flesh wound, so she will roll back over. The score is officially tied at one. Uh, House Goliath did have an opportunity to score an extra victory point, but they did not. Um, cool checks were taken by both sides. Everybody is good, and we are moving into turn three with House Escher up first. And after some debate for House Escher, Lace is going to double move. We then flip over to the Iron Skulls. Diesel is going to loot and get nothing from that objective marker. Eclipse is going to do a loot on her side, and she is going to score a victory point for the Fallen Angels. We then flip over to Fuse. He is going to move and fire. He is going to target Razor, and targeting the ground next to Razor, needing fours to hit here, and uh, he's going to be shooting with his grenade launcher. Dice are rolled, and he will get a hit. Uh, the knockback is not successful. There is not going to be a wound here, and uh, she is going to go down pinned. She is immediately going to use her first action to stand and fire back at Fuse, needing threes with the short-range bonus uh, with her last gun, and she is going to get a hit. There will also not be a wound, and Fuse will go down pinned. Over for the Iron Skulls, Spike is going to make a double move. And then we'll flip back over to the Fallen Angels where Viper is going to make a double move. And this is going to be followed up by Bone Crusher, who is also making a double move going next to the uh, loot objective at the top of the stairs. And then flipping back over to the Fallen Angels, we will see Edge make a double move. Everybody trying to get into some better positions here. And then over for the Iron Skulls, we will see Acid make a double move as well. And then Trix is going to move. She is going to target Acid with her last gun. And uh, she's going to need threes to hit with that short range bonus. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the last pistol that's actually shooting here. There is no hit. So Acid getting lucky here. We're next going to see Scuzz make a double move up next to the loot objective here. And then Bella is going to stand and she is going to make a move and she is at minus one toughness due to her flesh wound. And that's going to bring the end of turn three. So some shots fired. Um, the Fallen Angels scoring another victory point with the loot from Eclipse. Um, House Goliath just getting unfortunate on their on their loot rolls. They have looted more, but they do not have uh, the victory points that the Fallen Angels have. So we're starting to see some blows go out and back between these two. And really, what better way to have a game like this between two OG gangs, uh, House Goliath and House Escher, battling it out here. Turn four is coming up now. Priority rolls going out. The Iron Skulls are going to be up first. And immediately, Skuzz is going to do a loot here, and he is going to find nothing again. No victory points for House Goliath. Flipping back over to Viper, she is going to target Bone Crusher with an aim and fire with her last gun, needing twos to hit. She is going to roll out a hit here. Um, there is not going to be a wound, however. He will go down pinned. Acid is going to attempt to charge Trix here, and he is going to fail that. He needed a 2 on a D3. He's going to be an inch short. That's unfortunate. We go back over to Trix, who is now going to aim and fire at Acid, not wanting to get into close combat. She is going to hit, which is going to pin him, um, and that's going to be all there. Back over to uh, Spike here. 
he is going to move and fire, and he is going to target Razor with his stub cannon. And he is going to get a hit here on that six. Um, rolling out to wound, he is going to get a wound on that four. I think he only needed threes here. She is going to fail a save and take a flesh wound on the injury dice. Now, she is going to be knocked back, so we actually roll an extra injury die here because that increases the damage by one, and it's going to be a serious injury. So, Razor going down with a serious injury. Viper passes a cool check nearby on a 10. We are then going to see Lace make a double move next to the loot objective, flipping back over to Diesel. He is going to aim and fire at Trix with his stub cannon, needing threes here. He is going to get a hit. She will be knocked back. She is going to take a wound, fail her armor save, and then an injury dice rolled out for her as well. It is going to be a flesh wound. We are then going to see Edge make a move here for the Fallen Angels to uh, get next to a loot objective. And then the Iron Skulls are going to play their first tactics card, Inhuman Resilience. And that is going to allow all three of their fighters that are currently down to get up. So Bone Crusher, Fuse, and Acid are going to stand up on this card. Moving back over, we're going to see Eclipse. She is going to move and fire at Acid. The Juve misses, however. We then move over to Bone Crusher, who recently stood back up. He is going to loot, and it looks like House Goliath is going to tie this game up. They are going to get a victory point here. And then we're going to see Razor make a crawl move, going to get the assist from Viper. We'll see Fuse make a move here, and he is going to target the ground in front of Edge with his grenade launcher, and he's going to fire out needing fours. Hit roll coming out now, and it is going to be a miss, and ammo check will be required. We're going to go ahead and roll up the uh, scatter dice, and it is going to spread two inches, and it's just going to miss here. Uh, ammo check fails. He is going to be out of ammo. We are then going to see Bella move up, and she is going to target Scuzz with her plasma gun. Only needing twos here. Gets a uh, two hits with rapid fire. And then uh, rolling these two, it is going to be no wounds. He's going to go down pen, take an initiative check right here to avoid falling onto Fuse. He's going to pass, so he's just fine. In the end of the round, we're looking at a tie game. Place your bets now. Who is going to win? The Iron Skulls of House Goliath or the Fallen Angels of House Escher? At this point, it does feel a little like Goliath is flexing their muscle, um, getting fighters down when they need to but uh, really can go either way at this point. Priority rolls are going out for turn five. Very important here as members are on objective markers and House Escher is going to be up first. We're going to see Edge go straight for the loot, rolling up the die here, needing a four up. This goes off the camera, but it does score a victory point for House Escher. They're going to go up three to two. Moving over to Spike now, he is going to move and he is going to target Lace with his stub gun, officially within six inch range. They're getting a plus two bonus to hit, needing twos. He's going to get a hit here, so the champion is not going to be able to loot. He's going to do a wound and Lace is going to fail an armor save and she is going to take a wound here. Uh, go down pinned. She does have one wound left, but will not be able to loot that objective. We flip back over now to Viper, who is going to aim and fire at Bone Crusher again with her last gun. She just needs twos here, and she is going to get a hit, uh, needing fives to do wounds, and she's going to get a wound. He fails the armor save, and he is going to take a wound, go down pinned. And then we're going to see Acid make a charge into Trix. He is going to get three attacks coming across, two with his fighting knife and one from his stub gun. Um, he gets one hit on the fighting knife, and she has a lower toughness, so she's toughness two. So this two is going to do a wound to her. Rolling out the injury die, it is another flesh wound. She's going to take two flesh wounds. She's going to try to strike back with her stiletto knife and last pistol and misses. Eclipse will make a double move here, and then we will flip back over to the Iron Skulls, where Fuse is going to reload his grenade launcher and fire at Edge. Uh, again, targeting the ground just in front of Edge. He will need fours to hit, and the shot is going to miss. We're going to go ahead and roll out the scatter die here, and it is going to roll just enough two inches to actually still clip her. So it will hit a uh, wound roll coming out. And on that five, that will do a wound. Uh, we also roll, she will be knocked back. She fails the armor save, and uh, this weapon is going to do two damage due to the knockback. Two injury dice rolled out. She goes down with a serious injury. Trix is then going to attack Acid with two attacks, one from the stiletto knife and the other from the last pistol. 
uh, both of these are actually going to hit and a toxin roll being made for the stiletto knife in yellow it does fail so nothing happens there and no wound on the pistol flipping back over to acid he's going to attack with his combat knife in red and his pistol in yellow he's going to get two hits needing fours and then rolling these up he is going to get two wounds and the combat knife in red is going to take her out due to too many flesh wounds and on the other side, we will see Diesel make a double move and flip back over to see Lace. She will stand and fire at Spike with her plasma gun, and uh, she is going to roll out a hit. That hit is going to convert easily to a wound, and uh, there will be a failed armor save here at AP minus one, uh, needing a six. Injury dice will be rolled out, and uh, there are two of them, one out of action. So Spike going down to Lace. Scuzz then gets to his feet and he will fire at Bella with his shotgun. He does roll an ammo check here after getting a hit and passes the wound roll. She, hit, she does have reduced toughness, so the wound roll easily goes through and then she fails an armor save. Uh, out of action dice roll for her, actually two of them, only one showing on the camera, both seriously injured. So uh, Bella going down. We will then see her make a crawl move and then we will flip back over to Bone Crusher, who will stand and target Viper short range with his plasma pistol. Um, and he is easily going to get a hit here. Uh, that is going to convert to a wound up underneath, which was a five. And there is no armor safe here. Due to the AP, we are going to roll to see if she gets a six for her special skill, which is to dodge. That does not work. So it's going to be a two damage weapon and uh, one reduces her down to zero uh, wounds. An injury die will be rolled out. It is a flesh wound. She does go down pinned. And that's going to bring us to the end of the game with three seriously injured fighters down for Escher. They have decided to voluntarily uh, bottle and flee the battlefield. So uh, what a game. Um, House Escher is actually going to come away with a victory here three to two um, due to having uh, more loot crates. They were able to make it off the battlefield, uh, but they took a pretty heavy beating at the hands of House Goliath. So once again, the Fallen Angels of House Escher coming away with a three to two victory over the Iron Skulls of House Goliath, but at a very high cost. The post game report coming right up. All right, and welcome to the post game after the Fallen Angels of House Escher come away with a three to two victory over House Goliath. Um, what a game between these two factions. Uh, really, they, I, I think both sides could have kept going, and um, Escher was just really down a lot of fighters, or potentially down a lot of fighters, depending on what the dice rolled up with the three seriously injured fighters that they had. That would not have given them enough firepower uh, to continue dealing with um, the Iron Skulls. Uh, they could have potentially got another victory point there with Lace, who was occupying an objective and ready to loot. But they already had the lead 3-2, to two, and there was only uh, three objectives left on the table. Uh, one of them firmly within grasp, the other two still up in the air due to injured fighters around the area. So I think they made the right move there in fleeing the battlefield. Um, it was a great game, and we had a lot of fun playing it. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, be sure to let us know in the comments uh, what mistakes you saw because uh, the game got really long for us and it got a little tough to keep up with, to be honest. The Fallen Angels will improve to 2-0 on the campaign. There were some injuries that were experienced in this game. Uh, Edge had a head injury, so weapon skill will be decreased by one and she will go into recovery. Trix experienced a grievous injury going into recovery and Sleek was humiliated, so leadership and cool will be decreased by one and she will go into recovery as well. The Fallen Angels will come away with 30 credits and one rep for their victory today. The man or woman of the match today I think would go to Lace for her excellent shot against Spike to take him out of action with her plasma gun and she was really the only fallen angel that was able to work her way across the board and she was ready to potentially score going into turn six. Over for House Goliath they will also gain 30 credits for this scenario. Uh, a few injuries that took place for them. Dipstick, the Juve, experienced an eye injury, so his ballistic skill will be reduced by one, and he will be going into recovery. And Spike was hobbled, so his movement will be decreased by one. 
So uh, really hope you enjoyed this game, uh, enjoyed this battle report. It was a lot of fun making it. These two gangs are classic to Necromunda. Hopefully we didn't mess up too much. There will be more of this campaign coming in the future. Be sure to leave a like if you uh, enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.